Hey everyone, Madrib Red here. Pokemon Black with only one Drifloon was pretty brutal by the end. Let's follow up with a weird one. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Platinum with a team of only one Shuckle? All right, you already know what we're in for. Shuckle is a bug and rock type Pokemon with absolutely insanely lopsided stats. If you thought Chansey was crazy, then take a look at this. Almost no health, attack, special attack, or speed, but with completely absurd defense and special defense. So we hardly do any damage and hardly have any health, but we also hardly take any damage. This is really meant to be used as a support Pokemon, not your party lead. By level up, our moves are pretty rough. Constrict is our only attacking move until all the way at level 22, and it's a 10 power move on a Pokemon with 10 base attack. So we're going to be doing almost no damage for a little while. We do learn Wrap at level 22 so we can add in damage over time, but really, but really we don't get any good attacks until Bug Bite at level 40, and even then we aren't going to be good with it. By TM we can learn a pretty wide variety of moves, but again, we don't expect to hit hard. I could see stuff like Rock Slide or Earthquake being good, but I get the feeling that Rest and Substitute might be borderline required so I don't expect to have much type coverage. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think I'm probably gonna lose pretty deep into the run, simply due to not being able to do enough damage. But then again, Shuckle could really surprise me. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Shuckle. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Chimchar with Shuckle so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Chimchar so that our rival would have Empoleon, probably the hardest for us to fight. I name him Hoovy, like last time. You know, because he's got the juice. Our nature is bashful, so neutral stat gains. I'm fine with that. Okay, so what you're watching now is what it looks like at the start of a Shuckle run. We do almost no damage. It's awful. Our high defense doesn't even really save us this early on because we give them so many chances to attack us. It's probably going to be like this for a long time, and although you're given the return TM at the start of the game, we need a lot more friendship before it's any good. That said, I'm still going to learn it early because it simply has to be better than Constrict. There are some other decent moves that we can learn early on, but not until after the Rock Gym, and that's going to be a nightmare. Oh yeah, and I don't know how noticeable it is right now since we're still in early game, but I found a cool option in the randomizer that I'm trying out. You know how in Gen 4 it takes a really long time for the health bars to drain down after a hit? Like, the actual animation of the bar just plays really slow. Well, the randomizer has an option to make it so that the health and experience bar animation plays at double the speed. This doesn't change the gameplay at all since it's just a sped up animation. The experience you gain and the health that Pokemon lose are still the same numbers. This just speeds up fights a little bit. Let me know what you think. It probably only saves you like 15 seconds in a 3 plus minute fight, but it's something. Okay, first try at the rival was at level 10, and the problem here is that Starly just ruins our attack. That means we start doing 1 damage per attack pretty quickly, and always just lose a chip battle to Piplup. I actually have to grind a bit more just to beat the first rival fight. Okay, two levels later and we win pretty easily just thanks to having a bit more health and taking out Starly early with a crit. Alright, so I'm grinding before the Rock Gym. This is going to be an absolute disaster, I just know it. Not only are we going to be doing chip damage to them, but we're actually weak against Rock type. Rock, Steel, and Water are our weaknesses. I guess I could learn Rock Smash, but I won't be able to get rid of it until we're past the first Cyrus fight, and I really don't want to be stuck with a borderline dud move for that long just because it helps in this one gym. I get the feeling that I'm going to be stuck grinding here for a very long time. Like, to the point that I could end up maxing out my effort values before the first gym. It probably won't matter all that much in the long run, but I'm intentionally only fighting Machops and Ponyta because they're giving us effort values for attack and speed, probably the stats that we're going to need the most. I know for sure I don't need any more defense, special defense, or even special attack. Just so we're all on the same page though, the moment my effort values are maxed out this run, I am absolutely hacking in rare candies as an alternative to grinding. In fact, I'm probably going to use a bunch of rare candies after I am like halfway done my EV training, 
if the grind is really, really bad. Because I have to make like 500 Pokemon faint to actually max out the effort values, and at this speed, it's gonna take forever. Plus, it's a solo run. It's literally impossible for me to not max out my effort values by the end of the game, so it can't hurt us in the long run. If you think this grinding footage looks horrible, consider that after all these years I've simply never managed to get the auto-fire buttons working in this game. They work in other games with the exact same setup, but not in Gen 4 for some reason. So that means I'm actually mashing the A button for everything. This is exactly what destroyed the A button on my previous controller, and I'd really rather not have Carpal Tunnel at the age of 31, so I think rare candies are the way to go. Plus, do you want to see this video go up in three weeks, or now? Yeah, that's what I thought. So if you want an idea of just how bad it is fighting these rock types, this is us at level 20, nearly fainting, to the second trainer in the gym because we ran out of power points too early and are stuck using Constrict for ages. This is not even the gym leader, this is just a trainer in the gym. At level 22, I decided to give the rock gym a try since we had rap, but we went down to the first Geodude because he has rock throw. Okay, this might be a long day. I'm gonna grind until we get to rest. And if we need to grind more than that, then I'll use rare candies. Here we are, level 27 with rest, and this is a long one. We really don't do much damage, but we're doing enough that we can whittle down Geodude. And now that we have rest, we actually have the ability to heal back up. We lost a good three quarters of our health taking out Geodude, but the second is Onyx, and it's got really low attack, so I knew we'd be able to wrap it and rest to heal back up. And I was right. Onyx using Rock Throw was only doing about two damage when it would hit, so although we weren't doing much in return, we could easily outlast it. Onyx actually took ages to take down, though, way longer than Geodude, and the fact that he was using healing items really wasn't helping us. What made it worse is that Onyx would occasionally use Screech to lower our defense, so what used to be 2 damage from Rock Throw quickly became 6. Last was Cranidos, and although he was hitting a lot harder than the rest of his team, and we had to heal yet again, he was taking more damage than Geodude or Onyx was. We still had enough health and defense that we could get away without healing him, so we won. Okay, well, I'm thrilled that we were able to get past that at a lower level than I expected. I didn't even have to use a single rare candy! Right away, we can grab the TM for Rock Tomb. If our friendship is maxed, and I think it might be, then Rock Tomb won't be as strong as Return, but but I could just replace Rap. The only reason we have Rap is to deal more damage over time, but I think I'd rather have the option of using a Rock move for when it's super effective. Plus, it drops speed, and our speed is awful, so that might help us in some fights. You know what? I'll get rid of Encore instead. I can always relearn it later if it would be useful to have. Do you think Mars is going to be a problem? I figure we're too tanky to have any issues with it, but you never know. Well, Zubat got us early with Toxic in the Mars fight, but we have rest, so it's nothing to worry about. We had a really easy time. That means we have to get ready for the Grass Gym. Part of me thinks it won't be too bad, but my big worry is about Leech Seed. I'm pretty sure getting hit by that would be a guaranteed loss, just because we don't deal much damage and we'd be healing them. Plus, we're giving them a lot of chances to use it. The worst part is that we could get the TM for Substitute to shut it down, if not for how we need to be able to use Cut outside of battle, and we can't do that until we beat the Gym Leader. Let's just try the fight at whatever level we get there at, and see how it goes. So the Grass Gym fight ended up really surprising me. Not only did they not go for Leech Seed, but they really didn't try and throw any effects on us at all. They mostly just focused on doing direct damage to us the whole time, and it really didn't pay off for them, since we can outheal just about anything that isn't super effective against us this early in the game. Leech Seed would have just wrecked us, but she never went for it. Easy first try. Okay, now we can use Cut Outside of Battle, so I picked up the TM for Substitute before I went to the Rocket Hideout. I never know for sure if I'll need Substitute, but on a Pokemon like Shuckle, you can potentially be really annoying to deal with while using it, so there's no harm in having this. Now that said, I think the next couple fights are going to be difficult. Jupiter is often a mess if we don't deal much damage, so let's see how that goes. Now believe it or not, but Jupiter took quite a few tries. Zubat was easy, but Skuntank does feel incredibly random. Some attempts we just get hit by Screech a few times early and start taking way too much damage from Night Slash, sometimes they just spam Smoke Screen, and sometimes it's just a whole lot of Night Slash from the start. Well, the third try was mostly Night Slash, so we ended up winning. Alright, I'm pretty worried about the next part of the run. The Ghost Gym is often pretty hard, and we don't have any great moves for it. 
I can get my hand on Earthquake now, and that's an awesome move, but there's no point in actually using the TM until after the gym, because her entire team has the ability Levitate. Maybe we could hit level 40 and learn Bug Bite, although it's only got 10 power points and won't help with Haunter. I still think that we're going to need it though, because Rock Tomb only has 10 power points as well, and there's no way that we're taking out 3 Pokemon in less than 10 hits with a Shuckle. I'm going to grind to level 40 before the gym and get the Shell Bell from town. Wish me luck. It took a little while, but it turned out that the grind was absolutely necessary. Both Duskull and Haunter kept going down shockingly fast to Rock Tomb, but Miss Magius is a lot tankier and can confuse us to keep us from landing a hit every turn. It actually got scary partway through the fight when Shadow Ball dropped our special defense because I knew that too many of those would keep us from winning, but we ended up getting a win on the first try. I'm kind of shocked that we were doing as much damage as we were with a Shuckle, but I guess going out of my way to get those few extra attack EVs is paying off. I mean, our attack is only 38, so lower than our level, but it's something. Okay, this rival fight is insane. First, Stravia is out so our attack is down the whole fight, as if we had any attack in the first place. We two-shot it, but it used Endeavor to take out most of our health. That was a pretty smart move. As Prin Pulp came out, we had to use Rest right away, as his super effective Bubble Beams nearly took us out. I ended up going shot for shot with it once we woke up, and although we took it out, we only had 8 health left at the end. That's when Roselia came out and we had the Nightmare scenario. We healed, but he used Leech Seed, so now we give him health the whole fight. It's not going to heal him very much because we don't have many health points to give, but it is still healing them, and it is still hurting us. It really doesn't help that Roselia was also using Mega Drain, so it's doing two moves that heal it every turn. Thankfully, the moment we woke up, we landed a critical return to one-shot it, so we didn't have to deal with it surely out-healing us. Ponyta was last and it was hardly hurting us, but it did burn us, so I had to rest to heal back up. We came incredibly close to fainting at points, and we give them tons of health while we rested, but thanks to the type advantage, we eventually just beat Ponyta and won this never-ending rival fight. Well, I was kind of feeling like the fighting gym would be easy, but that rival fight has me worrying. You were seeing how badly we were getting messed up by Bubble Beam in that rival fight. What's gonna happen when Lucario uses Metal Claw? I'm thinking I'll ditch Return and replace it with Earthquake now. They're not the same power anyway, and Earthquake gives us more type coverage. Most importantly, it's going to help us get the win at the fighting gym. I can't imagine the rest of her team will be an issue, so let's just go straight there. Alright, I was right to think that Lucario was the only real threat and that Metal Claw would do a lot of damage, but what I'm kind of surprised by is how easy it still was. Earthquake was a two-shot. I was kind of expecting it to be more like three or four. We hardly ended up taking any damage most of the fight just because she couldn't get us many times with Metal Claw. That went pretty well, but I don't have high hopes for the next chunk of the run. Our rival might go alright, but then we've got the Water Gym. Not only are we weak to water, but they've got a Water Onyx, so our attack is going to take a hit. I'd say using Substitute could get around it, but if each member of their team can do enough damage that we'd have to remake the Substitute often, then it's probably a net loss having us waste the turns on it. I'll just see how the fight goes first, then maybe drop a Bug Bite in favor of Substitute if I think it'll save us. Alright, you know the Water Gym is going to be a nightmare because we didn't even make it past our rival spamming Bubble Beam. Are you kidding me? Alright, believe it or not, I haven't used any rare candies yet this run. The grinding actually hasn't been horrible, or as horrible as I thought it would be. But my effort values are for sure maxed out now. Let's level up and win this thing. You know what? It wasn't too bad. I cleared out the trainers on the western route and used a few rare candies and then tried the fight again. We had a real bad luck with getting hit by Endeavor early to lose a lot of health, but we could outheal Bubble Beam this time and we didn't get crit so we took it out. The whole rest of his team wasn't bad at all, it really was only super effective moves that can keep us down at this point. So, I got to the Water Gym at level 54 and gave it a few tries. It's very hard, but with some luck we can get past Water Onyx, but the issue is that Floatzel has Brine. It powers up a lot when we're below half health, to the point that we have to use Rest early to survive, but then we don't get any real chances to actually attack them. I'm gonna have to get at least a little bit tankier. Okay, four levels later and I'm still making tries. It's looking more hopeful. On this try we missed a Rock Tomb early, but the second one crit for a much needed one-shot. 
Floatzel was obviously still just spamming Brian, so we had to heal whenever our health was getting below half just to keep him from randomly taking us out. We can slowly outlast him, but this time after the first wake up we landed a crit to knock him out early. Last was Quagsire, and this part was rough. Every time we're awake, Quagsire uses Yawn to put us to sleep. It takes a while to work, but we nearly fainted because he was making us sleep outside of us just using rest. It wasn't dealing a ton of damage, but he was using a water pulse so he could confuse us. It literally took three entire minutes with fast text and no animations, but eventually, Quagsire went down. It took more than twice as long as the entire rest of the fight. We're back on the road, and we're finally getting close to getting a move upgrade. We have two major fights between us and the TM for Rock Slide. It's Cyrus and our rival. Cyrus shouldn't be hard, the first Cyrus fight rarely is, but I'm worried about that rival fight. Yeah, that's what I thought. Cyrus really couldn't do much to us. I'm pretty sure that he's gonna be rough in the last Cyrus fight though. I'm really not looking forward to that one. You ready to go lose to our rival? Okay, well, the rival fight really shocked me. I knew that Empoleon would go down faster now that he's part steel type, since we have Earthquake, but I thought he'd also be hitting us a lot harder. It turns out he really wasn't. We took him out easily, and the entire rest of his team was no problem at all. I did lose my first attempt because of Leech Seed from Roserade, but it doesn't actually use it very often, so on the second try, we just never got seeded. Easy win! Oh yeah, and you know how I said that I thought that I would just get the TM for Rock Slide now? Yeah, I didn't notice that it was actually gated behind not just Strength, but Rock Climb. Uh, that means we have to beat the Steel and Ice Gyms first? Ooh, wish me luck on that Ice Gym. Well, the Steel Gym ended up being super easy, like to the point that we were out healing them with the Shell Bell at points. That's gotta be a first, but I guess it makes sense. I've gotta say, this Shell Bell is really nice when you're using a Pokemon where you don't have many health points, but you've got a lot of defense. You guys probably don't want to see me walk all the way north, right? Well, let's just get to that Ice Gym. It's the last thing between us and a new TM. By the time we got to the Ice Gym, we were level 63, and you've gotta watch this one because it was long and kind of crazy. So here's the problem. No matter what, she likes to send in Obama Snow early so that it's a permanent hailstorm. That's really bad for us because it means that we're taking damage the entire fight. That makes us use Rest a lot more, but believe it or not, Rest isn't the issue. It's that it takes a very long time to take out most of our team, and by the time we get to Frostlass, we don't actually have enough power points to take her out. With her berry, we'd need to hit three rock tombs, but she spams double team and very quickly we start to run out of power points on the moves that would actually hit her. Eventually, she runs out of her other attacks and just spams Shadow Ball and the special defense drops will eventually doom us. I'm gonna have to get some levels and keep trying. A few levels later and the fight went mostly easy other than Frostlass at the end. She still spammed double team a lot and started using Shadow Ball near the end, but we got pretty lucky with our Rock Tomb's accuracy, all things considered. We missed a lot, but we also didn't need to land many hits to win. Okay, with all of that done, I'm gonna go through the Galactic Hideout to get to Cyrus. I don't think the second Cyrus fight will be that hard, but the third one usually is. Now that we can use Rock Climb outside of battle though, I went ahead and got the TM for Rock Slide. So no more getting the speed advantage through Rock Tomb, but that's okay. It's a lot stronger and half as likely to miss. I doubt we could even beat the game without this. It's going to completely save us in some of the harder fights. Yeah, so the Cyrus fight was kind of an easy first try, but I don't think anything in the game has done as much damage to us in a single hit as Haunch Crow was with Nightshade. That move does fixed damage, so it doesn't matter how high our defense is. That could potentially be incredibly dangerous in the last Cyrus fight. It's time to climb the mountain! That means we've got a double battle alongside our rival, the final Cyrus fight, and then the electric gym. The double battle might be really weird because it's a Shuckle and Munchlax fight, not exactly the most aggressive team in the world, but I'm sure it won't be too bad. We have decent moves and can rest if we have to. Cyrus is probably going to be a nightmare, because he usually is, and then the electric gym just shouldn't be that bad. We have earthquake, a lot of health, and rest. Unless Cyrus shuts us down for a long time, we might have smooth sailing until the final rival fight. As expected, the double battle was easy, but pretty long. They like to stall us, our ally's first Pokemon mostly just wastes time, and we don't hit very hard. 
I don't think they had a single Pokemon that could have done anything dangerous to us either than by dropping our accuracy, so our win was inevitable, it just took a long time. Next is the last Cyrus fight. I gave this one a few tries, and we never make it very far at all. The problem is that Water Onyx is second, so our attack drops, and we have to deal with getting hit by Waterfall. Not only does it do a lot of damage, but it causes flinches. Sometimes we make it past it, but we just go down to the Haunch Crow right after with Drill Peck. And I imagine that if my health was higher, he'd be taking us out with Nightshade instead. I'll have to keep getting levels. So I gain a few levels and keep trying just to hit a whole new snag. At level 73, we can just hardly beat Water Onyx, and Honchcrow doesn't seem to have Nightshade anymore since he's just using Drill Peck, so he's easy. But then Weavile hardly takes any damage, has pressure so we run out of power points fast, and he uses Ice Punch every turn so it doesn't take long before we're frozen solid and just lose because of it. Well, I can't do anything to stop him from doing that, so I just have to get stronger. Okay, at level 77, we started doing noticeably more damage and could make short work of nearly everyone on his team, including Weavile, who now goes down much easier. Last was Crobat, who made us flinch three turns in a row, confused us, hit Toxic, but eventually went down to our last power point of our rock slide when we crit. I am so thankful for that crit because I was not looking forward to finishing it off with double resisted bug bite. Finally, the electric gym was all really easy. I lost the first try thanks to Iron Tail dropping my defense a bunch at the start, but that was just really good luck on his end. On the second try, they could hardly hurt us at all. That means we're on the road to the last rival fight. I really don't know how this one's gonna go. It's the rival fight that ends platinum runs, but I don't really think that's stopping us this time. I could see us having to grind before we can win though, especially considering he could just hit Leech Seed right away at the end of the fight just to totally shut us down. I almost wonder if I'll need to be a higher level to beat the next rival fight than I do for the entire Elite Four themselves. So the last rival fight wasn't exactly a hard one, but it was an incredibly long one. Empoleon was the only one who could deal decent damage to us, but we still took him out pretty easily. The problem is that he started with Star Raptor, so we got hit by Intimidate, and he U-turned to switch to Empoleon. That meant that later in the fight he was able to switch back to Star Raptor, dropping our attack by another stage. That made Snorlax into a nightmare because we were doing so little damage that he could just use Rest. I was worried that we would get totally stalled out when a lucky crit and his own bad move choice got us a knockout. He should have been using Rest earlier for safety. I'm pretty sure that Roserade at the end still has Leech Seed, but she didn't use it, so we ended up winning. Her using it was pretty much my nightmare scenario after how long that fight took. Now that we're the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Our defense is nearly 400. It doesn't even look right on my screen. Like, it's gotta be some kind of glitch or something to have a stat that high. I kinda love Shuckle. Also, 80 attack? Mm, that's not horrible. Well, it kind of is, considering we're level 81, but it's not horrible for a Shuckle. What is horrible is our speed, and I think it's going to really bite us in the Elite Four. Speaking of, I don't really know how that's going to go. I think Bertha and Flint will be fine, but either than that, I haven't got a clue. We're not obviously weak to any of them, but I tend to get stuck at random parts. I really doubt that we're beating Cynthia below level 90 though, just because we'll probably be slower than her entire team. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Bug Trainer Aaron. Now, I could sit here and give you the blow by blow, but for the sake of not having every battle description go as long as the fight itself, the only Pokemon that really brought us close to fainting was Scizor, as you could imagine. It was the hardest hitter with super effective moves. His Heracross was probably also a threat, but I don't think it could have taken me out unless he crit me on one of those stone edges that he was using. He's actually a big part of my strategy in this fight, using Rest over and over until he ran out of Stone Edge because he can only use it five times. I have to do that though, because otherwise we get taken out before we can use Rest again. As long as I made sure that I rest every chance I get until he's out of power points on Stone Edge, we're good. Second is Ground Trainer Bertha. I tried this one over and over because it didn't seem that hard, but Rhyperior was always just hardly taking us down. If we use Rest and he spams Earthquake, then we have one turn where we can attack before we have to rest again. The problem is, when we give them that many chances to attack us, we usually get crit eventually and that ruins things. But on this run where I took it down, it didn't matter because Hippodon just crit us to take us out instead. Alright, 
that's a good sign that we need to be stronger. Now, it took all the way until level 87 before I could win this, and the fight was an entire eight minutes. I know eight minutes does not sound like a long time, but I promise you it is insanely rare that I have an eight minute fight in a Pokemon run. Considering this is the fastest text speed, with a mod speeding up how fast the health bars move, and no animations on, eight minutes is crazy long for a solo battle. I have full team runs where the battles do not go eight minutes against the Pokemon champion. In fact, the average full team battle against the Pokemon champion goes well under eight minutes. Most of the fight was Hippodon putting us to sleep over and over and over. Half the things we fight have phases based on what moves they've run out of. Hippodon spams his five stone edges early, so we have to rest a ton, but once he's out of that, we mostly just get put to sleep over and over. Gliscar at the end almost took us out, and I was petrified of a random crit, but in the end we won. I actually have to use a max elixir before I go on to the next fight, that's how long this fight went. Third is Fire Trainer Flint. This fight was really fast and easy by contrast. We have good rock and ground moves, there's nothing they could have done. We ended that fight with low health, but that's because I was playing pretty recklessly. Fourth is Psychic Trainer Lucian. This is another rough one, but believe it or not, it's Bronzong that's usually what we get stuck on. He's not just tanky, he spams Calm Mind. That gets out of control fast, because he can make his psychics strong enough to actually outdamage our rests. That's really not good. If we're having that much trouble with Bronzong, how do we take down his galley that's gonna spam Stone Edge? Just spam rest and hope for the best until he runs out? Let's level up a bit more. Okay, level 92. Like before, Bronzong was the real monster of her team, and the thing that I spent by far the most time fighting. What we need is for him to not use too much Calm Mind, and for Psychic to not drop our special defense too much. This really wasn't easy, since we give him so many chances to hit us with Psychic as we rest, but thankfully on this attempt, he was more focused on attacking than using Calm Mind. So although it was a really long and brutal fight, we did eventually take him out. I was also right that Gallade would be hard, but thankfully, we could just fight him the same way that I fought Heracross in the rival fight. Spam rest until he's out of Stone Edge, then we can fight him normally. The entire rest of his team was pretty easy. I can't believe we finally won that fight. Finally, Pokemon Champion Cynthia. First is Spiritomb, and I wasn't doing much, but quickly she switched out to Lucario. We took alright damage from Stone Edge, but it was nothing too serious, and we were able to take him down in a couple hits of Earthquake while staying healthy. Problem is, she sends in Melodic, who is instantly doing big damage with Surf. She crits us, but we crit her too. Here's the real problem. We don't have enough health to survive resting against Melodic. On this one lucky run where we got a crit, we were able to take it down, but then we only had 9 health left and got one shot by Togekiss right after. 9 out of 10 times, we don't even get past Melodic. Let's level up and keep trying. Alright, even all the way at level 97, if we have to rest early in the Melodic fight, then we simply never get past it. The only attempts where we beat Melodic are the ones where we get very lucky early on, but we always end up with low enough health that we get one shot right after. I'm gonna have to hit level 100 and keep trying. Okay, level 100, and this is many tries in. We have a great start against Spiritomb when we get it to flinch early and get it to use a full restore. I'd much rather she use full restores on weak Pokemon like Spiritomb than the strong ones like Melodic. She switched to Lucario after not long, but we crit an Earthquake to take it out right away. As Melodic came out, we just spammed Rock Slide. Between the Shell Bell healing us and her not using a full restore, we took it out while still in yellow health for the first time. This meant that as Togekiss came out and hit Water Pulse, we used Rest right away. Now, we're still in danger because he's got a water move and can confuse us. In fact, he landed a crit that confused us while we were asleep, so I ended up waking up, landing a Rock Slide, then I went back to sleep just so that we'd have more health for the rest of the fight. We had 123 health left when we took it out. Garchomp was next, and we were in uncharted waters now, so I was winging it and testing moves. Dragon Rush wasn't doing a ton to us, but it did make us flinch sometimes, so once I got Garchomp to low health, I used Rest to play it safe. Problem is, when we woke up and landed another hit, Garchomp survived with a sliver and used a full restore, so we had to very slowly whittle it back down, rest, and finish it off again. 
The battle actually took so long that Garchomp ran out of Dragon Rushes and had to start using Giga Impact, a move that did almost nothing and would make her waste turns. I don't know why she wasn't just using Earthquake that whole time. Uh, she hasn't run out of power points on it. After it went down, Spiritomb came back out and went down in a couple of hits after hardly hurting us, and last was Roserade. Naturally, I was terrified of being Leech Seeded right away, but she didn't. She used Energy Ball instead, and our Bug Bite did awesome damage, so we won quickly. It took getting to level 100, but we won. Yet again, another really fun Shockle run. It's often really slow and can be pretty brutally difficult at times, but it's genuinely a fun Pokemon to use. If you're playing this on your own and you want a fun challenge, solo Shuckle ones are kind of fun, as long as you don't mind the grind. I do highly recommend using rare candy cheats as opposed to grinding if you're going to go do your own Shuckle run though, just for the sake of your own enjoyment. I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next Saturday like usual with Pokemon Blue with only version exclusives. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time. Okay, so obviously these voiceovers are done a little bit past when I do the run. You know, you, I know some of you have watched like my really old tutorial series that I did where I show you guys how I do these Pokemon challenges. So some of you already know that like, you know, I, I record a run and I, I write down the whole script of that run. And then the next week is when I do the voiceover and the editing of that run. And then it's the week after that that it actually airs. So when you're listening to me in these outros, you're hearing me from a week before the video airs, but the, the actual challenge was two weeks before the video airs. So, you know, uh, time always gets a little bit wacky, uh, but at the time that you're hearing my voice, uh, I will have already been streaming a little bit more over on Twitch. I always put all those uh, the VODs up on YouTube, on the YouTube channel that you're on right now, in fact, in case you want to watch any of those. I got back into Mountain Blade Bannerlord, which I absolutely adore that game. That one's always fun. And I have a few other games in mind that I wouldn't mind playing on the show. I really want to start another RimWorld playthrough, and I did find a mod that puts Pokemon into RimWorld, which is kind of cool. So maybe I'll mess around with that at some point. Maybe I'll do a regular old RimWorld playthrough because everybody absolutely loves when I do that game and I love playing it. But uh, yeah, just letting you know that I'm going to be streaming more. The occasional stream might be on YouTube. I have nothing against streaming on YouTube, but generally I don't like keeping all of my eggs in one basket. So most of my streams are over on Twitch but nearly every single stream I do is going to be recorded and put up on YouTube at some point after. I try to get it up within the same week, try and get it up pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, you know my Twitch is in the description if you ever want to go follow me on that. Uh, but I should get to work on editing this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.